Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Steph, and today it's a rainy Saturday vlog where I make a tomato galette. So I decided to do this as a voiceover because I really wanted to just relax and be in the moment and still capture the day. So it wasn't super in the moment, but it was definitely more than taking breaks to like sit and like talk to you guys. Um, my friend and I, we we're gonna go and like spend the day by the pool but it was super rainy but we still decided to like, go swimming instead and we had a great time then came back got cleaned up and chilled for a bit before i decided to make this tomato galette this is adapted from wishbone kitchen's recipe and i will link that down below so you guys can see the full thing what i did was i didn't use pine nuts in my pesto because i'm allergic but if you're not allergic you can just use store-bought pesto or make your own pesto with pine nuts and stuff so it is very good so the first thing i did was i sliced the tomatoes and laid them out on a paper towel and salted them to draw out the extra moisture and then i rolled out my pre-made dough which i followed her recipe for and it was a really nice dough i would really recommend it and it's really easy to make it's really easy to roll out 10 out of 10 and I cleaned up for a bit and then laid down the pesto base and this sort of acts like a tomato galette is kind of like pizza with like just a different it's like a tart kind of like a pizza tart you know um, it's just like the dough that kind of makes the difference so that kind of acts as the sauce and then I laid out the tomatoes I used heirloom tomatoes because they were in season and that's what she also recommended to use but you can use any kind of big meaty tomato that you want you then roll up the sides of the pastry to kind of capture all of the tomato juice and to create that tart shape and then I brushed my edges with some olive oil this lets the crust get a little bit more golden brown and a little bit glossy as you're baking it and then I baked it and got to work cleaning up the kitchen and setting up the table and I did make a salad as well which was a it's called like the like rosé mix. I think it's just like red slash like purple lettuce with um, some regular like sweet lettuce and stuff like that. And it's all locally grown in Ontario. So if you're not from Ontario, just look for the like darker bibs of lettuce and you can kind of mix them together. And then, yeah, just set it up and chilled while letting it all bake. We were watching Love Island which I think by the time you guys see this, Love Island is definitely long over, but if you haven't seen it, this season of Love Island, I, I don't know, what were your guys' thoughts? Did you like it? Did you not? I personally felt like it was a little, it was a little mid. I think it was lacking some of the drama that previous seasons were, but yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. So once your galette is done baking, you need to take it out of course i let mine cool for like five ten minutes until it was still warm in the center but not so warm that when i added the stracciatella from the inside of my burrata that it would melt the stracciatella immediately it was still warm for sure but it wasn't like hot but I think everybody has like different opinions on how hot or cool it needs to be. I personally was trying to find that balance of serving it while it was still like hot in the center, but it wasn't going to melt the cheese when I laid it on top. So I think everybody has their own preference on it. And honestly, nobody cares about a little bit too melty cheese. I think there's never, there's never such thing as too much melted cheese. <laughs> so it just depends. So, okay, after it's cooled, going back to this, um, you want to drizzle the remaining pesto on top, and this kind of adds just a little bit more pesto flavor, and the fresh, like, cool basil has a really nice, like, taste, and it really balances, like, the sweet roasted tomato flavor, and then it's, like, it cuts through the creaminess of the stracciatella and the burrata as well sometimes you can get depending on where you are and what grocery store you go to you can just get a tub of stracciatella i don't have that luxury um so i just like ripped apart my burrata and pulled the stracciatella out and then i did leave the casing of the burrata because i wasn't going to waste it but like i said you can in some cases find just like a tub of stracciatella that you can spoon over I know that in a lot of like wishbone kitchens tiktok videos she does have like a 
tub of stracciatella so i think it would depend on like where you are and what your grocery stores have access to and stuff i then salted everything again and put a little bit of pepper on and served it with my salad and some water and that was it it's actually a really easy recipe and it does look really aesthetically beautiful it's something that you can easily kind of make the components ahead of time and then pop everything in the oven before you're ready to serve and it cooks in like i think 30 minutes so it's perfect to like heat right as people are showing up if you are going to make this for a dinner party but that's everything thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and let me know if you try this recipe